Okay, before looking at the larger one over here, the really powerful one, let's take a look at a different type of a pyramidal array. This one actually is a half inch thick. It's still two by two at the base, and it also tapers to one inch with a one inch base that tapers to three millimeters. But as you can see, it's a lot more squat, and obviously creates this uh, bent pyramid versus uh, this one, which actually um, is a one inch high. It's still two by two, the same as the other one. So let's actually take a look at the plane of inertia, how it actually convexes in towards the tip on this. And then we'll actually look at the powerful one underneath the supercell here. Let me place it here. Let me zoom in a little bit better so you could see it. Instead of a uh, straight plane of inertia, here you can actually see how it uh, uh, it curves towards uh, the tip of the pyramid. The plane of the inertia, uh, plane of inertia, is uh, depressed inside of the magnet like this, and it doesn't matter which way I turn it. It's always a mirror image, each and every little side. And here you can see it actually. The actual field geometry of the magnetism on this is actually as if there was a. Uh, on um, the plane of inertia is depressed like a, a bowl formation uh, at the center. Also, too, this one underneath the uh, supercell, it's actually uh, quite interesting how it actually comes off like this. You can see the right angles. This one is different. I need to make this, uh, remake this cell. It's getting old and it's been burned in a little bit. These powerful ones burn it in. Let me set this magnet over here safely out of the way. And then what I'll do is I'll grab the powerful beast and then I'll bring it over here. Let me actually, uh, first let me put it on its tip. And if you actually place it on its tip, it doesn't look any much dissimilar. Wait till I change positions, however, from any other. Here we go any other magnet that looks the same. It's hard to get focus on this, but you'll notice a distinct difference at the point of a centripetal inertia and acceleration on the side profile. And by the way, the side profile on this looks the same, except it's more uh, pronounced when I added the two by two uh, by one inch thick block booster to the base. It uh, looks exactly the same before I did that, except it's slightly more pronounced. So now let's see where the rubber meets the road, the difference, and you might be surprised, or you may not. I predict that it would look this way. And of course, let me bring it here. Here, of course, I'm looking at the bottom, but let me bring the tip up. And focus, someone's going focus, focus. Here we go, here you can actually see the stark side profile and the plane of inertia right here. And of course that's the base down there, but if I press the magnet up, let me zoom in a little bit more, there we go. I don't wanna get my recorder too close because it's so powerful. Here you can actually see this pyramidal point right here. Now let's do top profile and then to side profile. I really need to make remake this uh, supercell bad. And as I bring it to the side profile here, let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Side profile to top, to side, to top, to side. So here you can actually see this uh, looking pressed up against the tip of the pyramid play of inertia with this uh, pyramidal distortion because all the magnetic flux, just like a fireman's hose, uh, is escaping right out of this three by three millimeter tip. But the side profile shows, sorry about the camera movement here, shows uh, the portal play of inertia is identical no matter what side I use. Is starts right about here by going to the tip. If I bring it up against that tip once again so you can see it. And of course also at the bottom, I don't know if I could actually, you know, I can't tilt this up on its bottoms, uh, excuse me, up on its top, but you just see this. But 
a, a portal for uh, dielectric portal, if you will, you could call it a few different things, is increased at the base, and it's just simplex pressure mediation. Here you can actually see the size of it, and uh, the distortion from the constructive and destructive interference around it at the base, because normally it would not be this big, this is large. But also too, the plane of inertia, just the same as on the other magnet, is curved like this. So the plane of inertia is curved, just as you saw in the other bent pyramid, if you will, so to say, call it a bent pyramid. Uh, it's curved like this, so the actual uh, plane of inertia curved like this towards the point is literally a vortex that is pouring right to the tip. This is the one and only time where, and I have, I can't stand new age stuff. If that offends you, so what? I can't stand new age stuff, but this is the one time where you could actually say pyramid power is actually real because it is real when it comes to pressure mediation like this. We actually have as a conjugate of uh, the point source of the magnetism. What actually defines a magnet, um, uh, since it's not uh, quantitative, it's qualitative. The qualitative definition of a magnet is a point source emission point source emission with a geomagnetic precession. What we actually hear is have here, of course, with any magnet, is a point source field coherency, but we also have a conjugate point source wherein each and every magnet, since these are operating as one now, since they're collectively together, this one, this piece, and this piece are acting together, we actually have a point source emission here, but the magnet itself, or by the whole, either in whole or in part, which of course is both acting, these three pieces as a whole, are... Uh, point source uh, field coherency, but uh, also, too, in addition to that, we have a multiplicative of point source. So we have point source in the whole that defines the qualitative nature of a magnet, and uh, we have point source specifically, which is, now the first point source is incommensurable and has actually no, no, no location, since obviously you could slice a magnet like a hunk of salami a million, million slices. If you could do that, of course, you can't. But if you could, each slice would have a quote-unquote north pole and a south pole. So the one point source in the magnet is uh, incommensurable, but the second point source is not incommensurable, but because its location, the topos, is right here. And uh, if you actually wanted to say magnetism, laser, this would actually be the closest analog as well as the difference between a light and a laser. This would be the closest analog that I could think that people could wrap their minds around as far as what defines as being the single most powerful magnets for its size and volume on Earth. This one I've got right here. I'm trying to back my video device away so I don't ruin it. And here you can see the pyramidal shape on the... Um, on the point of increasing inertia and acceleration, this black hole, if you will, except it's not a hole shape, is pyramid shape. And I can actually say that this is the first time ever anybody ever in history has used a supercell constructive destructive uh, interference uh, magnetism viewing device with a pyramidal magnet. So actually this is the first video of its kind ever done by anybody ever. Actually, the guy that actually sells these pyramidal magnets uh, has never even heard of a ferrocell or a supercell. Never heard of it. He's uh, not really into magnetism, nor does he know anything about it, but that's not an insult. That's just, I mean, that describes everybody. So, uh, there we go. Here's the world's first view underneath a supercell viewing device of the world's most powerful permanent magnet for its size and volume. And here you can see literally the pyramidal uh, point of increasing inertia and acceleration. Pyramidal, as you can see, it's pyramidal, right? It's exactly as I predicted it would be. I don't know if that's exciting or not for you, but you can say no one has ever seen it before. And uh, when I first saw it, I was the first person in the world to see it. So now you're the second people in the world to see it. Thank you so much for watching. This is, uh, I don't know if that was anticlimactic or not, but this is what a lot of people had asked me for. God, this sucker's powerful. Uh! <laughs> did, you, did you see the magnet? There's a piece of metal underneath this table. I put the magnet over there and went, Chook! it's so powerful. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, you can click the link below. Um, tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy. And...
Peace out, Girl Scout. Magnetism. <laughs>